This is Judge Joe Brown, and we're listening to We All Be News. News Free Dixie for the 21st century. Well, like, did you know Bunchy Carter at all? Um, yes, I knew Bunchy Carter. I recruited him to UCLA. Also, oh, wow. uh, John Huggins. Yes. Bunchy Carter had been a Slauson gang member, and he got out of the penitentiary, but he wrote poetry. He was very smart. He taught himself to read and write, so he got recruited at the UCLA under a special program. He was doing all right as a student. Mm-hmm. He and John Huggins, Huggins, who came in from out of town, was also a good student, got recruited, were gunned down in front of 43 witnesses in a cafeteria in broad daylight, by four people who were members of the US organization. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing that struck me is they only caught two of them who were accessories. And uh, I remember seeing them after they had been prosecuted. Hell, I testified as a witness. They got prosecuted. Locked up in the penitentiary and two years later I ran at them, ran into them at the Palladium in Hollywood at a concert. It was sitting at the table. So what are you two doing out? They had escaped and they had an all points bulletin out for two days and then they canceled it. Well to make a long story short, about five, six years ago they showed up to surrender. And they were told nobody was interested. The wow. two people who actually did the shooting, their names were known, addresses were given, and I think one of them's mama was uh, identified as the place where they were staying. The police didn't even go by there to get them. Do you Ron do that? Coringa wow. got five years in the California State Penitentiary for torturing several women. He got paranoid thinking they were going to poison him. So they let him out after one year exactly. And then within 40 some days, he became a tenured professor at the California State University system, in the California State University system. Wow. So what you're saying is to me, it's not the government was involved in this, like COINTELPRO. Well, they have an involvement, it's just they have simpatico Negroes. Mm hmm who go along with it. I, I know I was listening to a documentary. Uh, General Pratt was interviewed, and he felt like that the US organization was not the mastermind behind the um, John Huggins and Bunchy Carter assassinations. And people also question Elaine Brown. Uh, no. Oh, well, I know both of them. I recruited both of them, the UCLA undergrad. Oh, okay. Geronimo Pratt. What it was about is, my opinion, the people that were most behind it was the LAPD special unit known as SIS. Mm -hmm. I actually got told by some detectives who were investigating the murders that they thought I was right because uh, the only people that knew the information were in the police department, but when they got there, uh, the US organization had already been advised. Elaine Brown was a smart individual, and she'd worked as a clerical around the UCLA campus for some years, and she wound up passing the test and got recruited as an undergrad. I knew all of them. Mm -hmm. I was the BSU community liaison, and at that point, we had tripled the number of African Americans in UCLA, and we got good ones in who couldn't be counted on. When I got in UCLA in 1965, there was a grand total of 73 African-American full-time grad students, 72 full-time undergrad students, and the student body totaled at 64,000 students full-time. Okay. Now, eight years ago, the student body was 96,000, and they admitted one African-American freshman. Right. But... Going back, we wound up getting more African Americans in in 1966. In 1967, we got 250 in. And in 1968, we got 250 in. And we got those who wanted to be black student union members for the 
I guess, the appearance. And whereas, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Big Lou then, the basketball player, Mike Warren, Lucius Allen, you know, all the UCLA basketball team with a lot to lose, man. We got to go move on the administration building. Let's go. You got these people, and I'm sorry, brother. I understand the sacrifices that you made to get me in here, but I can't afford to jeopardize my career. I will have you in mind. Grab that fool and bring him with us. And I remember we had a BSU president mm-hmm. named Eddie Maddox. He's mm-hmm. dead now. And he didn't want to go. He was so scared that when we took him out there, he peed his pants. <laughs> Lord. Okay. It was like that. Wow. That's amazing. So, so, wow. so the primary group, we didn't get any through any back doors, any special programs. We got in through the front doors. Mm-hmm. But we were conscientious and we had a cause. So we were willing to sacrifice our future and our lives for that cause. And a lot of people got killed around UCLA back in those days. Uh, A lot of them, we felt us organization had a lot to do with. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, what you think about now that Ron Karangla is so celebrated now? I mean, his Kwanzaa thing is basically a a national holiday. I mean, it's a money maker. I don't celebrate it because I think he is a sellout Negro of the worst type. Mm-hmm. I met Ron Karinga on a field trip to L.A. City College. His name was mm-hmm. Ron Everett, and he had a mm-hmm. Jamaican accent, lo- accent, long wavy hair and green eyes, and he was, I say, you know, hey, man, you got to come and get your education. Mm-hmm. And that's the way he talked when I met him, and then later, better, better, than as much as the black man need to know. How some of it's not at all necessary for you to trouble yourself. Because I, my ladder, would teach you everything you need. A la la, my ladder. A la la, my ladder. Teach on that. Mm. He killed some very good friends of mine. Mm. And we had, uh, you know, like, you spoke about the my ladder. We'll bring him out here. I talk about him to his face. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't like him. Now, our people are so asleep on this history. I mean, I, I don't understand. Like, is it, we could get it. It's available right at our fingertips right now. So well, well, let, yeah, me, give me, let mm-hmm. me give you an example. There is a guy named um, uh, Yuko Babu. He runs the Pan-African Film Festival now. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to raise money in 1973 for Fralemo, a group of African guerrillas. Mm-hmm. Well, he wanted to ship these combat boots and uniforms over there, but the State Department stopped him. They had a whole plane full. So wow. he decided to give a concert at the Palladium. Stevie mm-hmm. Wonder performed free of charge for two hours. Wow. Oscar Brown Jr. Mm-hmm. and Pharaoh Sanders and Gene and Judy Pace performed free oh, of charge. Wow. We had all of these stars, didn't charge a dime. Ron Karinga wanted $5,000 to have his boot dancers put on a show. (laughs) (laughs) You had Stevie Wonder for two hours. You had Oscar Brown Jr. and everybody. He wanted $5,000. This is back in 1974? Yeah. No, 73. 73. Okay. Interesting. He's a capitalist. Man, you go to hell. That's where, by the way, that's the Palladium incident where I saw these two folks that murdered uh, John Huggins and uh, Bunchy Carter. Wow. 